and Variance Board meeting for Wednesday, December 10th, 2014. My name is Roy Acri. I'm the chief of the fire department here for the city of Smyrna. To my left is Scott Stokes, the director of public works. To his left is David Lee, the chief of police. Also directly in front of Scott is Heather Korn, the deputy city clerk, who will be taking the official minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. First item on the agenda is 2A. V14-043 public hearing to allow a second full kitchen with single family townhome, 0 0.06 acre landlot 808, located at 5134 Afton Way. Brigada Suarez, is the applicant present? Can you step forward, please? And Ms. Suarez, we're, we're just going to talk to you and give you an opportunity to tell us about what's going on with your various requests. I just ask that, that when you do speak, that you speak into the microphone because the official minutes for the meeting are being recorded. Okay. Okay, cause, so for the record, could you state your name, please? Brigida Suarez. Okay, Ms. Suarez, um, you, you, you're, you're here because um, you guys have a second full kitchen. Uh, yes. in, in your town home, and you weren't aware that that would require some type of variance. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so can you tell us kind of how you ended up, how, how did you end up with the kitchen? Okay, I buy that property, and I didn't know that I had to have a burial to us to put the kitchen there mm -hmm. on the downstairs floor because I'm going to live with my parents, and my parents are senior, and they cannot go up and down, so I just want to make sure feel comfortable for them to have the available the kitchen they use in case to make, you know, breath or lunches. It's a single family home. I know planning to live with anybody else. Okay. We have any questions for the applicant right now? How many other units are attached to your unit? It's only on the down floor. It's only the kitchen. No, 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 no. no. Okay. How many other townhouses? You live in a townhouse, correct? Yes. And you have other ones next to you or around you. How many is in your particular? I don't know about the, the other people who live around me. They have the okay. kitchen. You don't live in a detached house, correct? I'm sorry? You live in a townhouse that has other houses Next attached. Next to me. Okay. How many other houses are attached to the ones that you live in? Um, we have like a one, two, one on the right side and one on the left side. Okay. So your, your townhome is in the middle yes. and you have a townhome to your left and right? Yes. And, and those three together make up one building, is that correct? No, they are individual building. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No more. No more questions for the applicant. Well, not not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. Thank you. If you would just have a seat right there, we may call you back up. But this time, I'll call staff for some background. Uh, Joey Stobbs, Planner One with Community Development. Um, I believe there are eight units in that townhome section um, to answer that question. Okay. And, and she is, the, the property owner is not at the end on either side, so there are units attached to the right and left of, of the subject property. Uh, applicant is requesting a variance to allow a second full kitchen in the basement at 5134 Afton Way. Um, I think we were, community development was made aware of this through a code enforcement um, issue. Um, and then upon them, them discovering the, the kitchen, they were informed that they would either need a variance or remove the the kitchen. Usually what we constitute a kitchen is a stove. 
a microwave and a sink um, and based on my discussion with the building official that that would not constitute a kitchen but when a stove is involved then it does become a kitchen and there and there's a stove at this location correct there is okay. a electric stove and um based on the um the applicant's information at, at one point the previous owner had a jacuzzi tub um, with adequate power supply and plumbing that was then converted that plumbing and electric was used to install this kitchen which has cabinets a stove a microwave dishwasher sink and a refrigerator um, it's subject property zoned rm12 um, which allows multifamily um, dwellings single family attached uh, as well as like uh, duplexes but the subject property was built as a single family home town home uh, meaning <clears throat> one dwelling is one full kitchen so <clears throat> They are requesting the variance due to their um, their parents with mobility issues that preclude them from using stairs. There is an access point from the driveway that's at ground level um, that they can use to enter the basement uh, without the need of stairs. And there's been no modification to the townhome that would make it a duplex so so just for clarification when you mention that that there have been no in interior petition dividing walls built anything like that correct yeah. um. <clears throat> and and okay i have another question but it may be for the applicant do we have any questions for staff joey do you know the interior layout of the basement I do not. I've I've not been inside. I just know that there is a kitchen. Um, I believe there is a bathroom and a bedroom and a mechanical room. That the mechanical room includes a, a gas water heater, uh, and it is contained uh, and closed off from the rest of the basement. It is a finished basement. It it was finished before the owner the current owner took ownership of the property um you want me to give the, our recommendation now or you want sure Go ahead. so previous uh, variances have been granted for second full kitchens the ones that i'm aware of were all in single family detached homes um i i am not aware of any that have been approved in a town home so but based on that we we have recommended approval with um six conditions one the finished basement is to be only utilized by family members two the applicant shall not lease rent or sublet any space in their home three the basement stove shall remain an electric appliance or these conditions shall run in perpetuity with the property and as such are also applicable to any future owner five upon sale change of ownership or refinance the deed for the subject property shall be amended to restrict rental of the basement as a separate dwelling unit and six the applicant must provide third-party verification from a licensed building inspector 
certifying that all aspects of the basement kitchen meet city requirements. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for staff? Okay, I, I have a follow-up question for the applicant. Uh, Ms. Suarez, could you step forward, please? In your home, this, this second kitchen is in the basement, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And there are stairs that go from upstairs to downstairs? Yes. Is there a door that closes the stairs off at the, at the top of the stairs or at the bottom of the stairs? Do you have oh, a door? We have a door to get into the second floor, okay. but I don't have a door. To is the stop. door, so, so if, if, I were, if I were in your home okay. and I were upstairs and I wanted to walk downstairs, would I have to go through a door at the top of the stairs or at the bottom of the stairs? At the top of the door. I would have to go through yes. a door. Okay. Okay, that's all I had. Any questions for the applicant? All right, so what's the layout of the basement? You have a kitchen, and what else? What else is down there? Downstairs is the kitchen, the bathroom, and a home, um, a room. And the room is used for living purposes and for sleeping? Yes. Okay, so it's a, okay. Is there a back door? How do you get in and out of the basement? You, it's the front, front door. When you, the, from the, outside, there's a front door there. So there's not a back door to get out? No. Other than going up the stairs? Yes. And the reason for the door at the top of the stairs is what? For privacy? Yes, it's a privacy, and plus, you know, uh, that way keep the, the, the insulation warm and cold when it's time to, to use the units. Do they have a separate thermostat downstairs to control the heat? No. Or the air? Are, are you the owner of the property? Yes, I am the owner of the Sole property. Sole owner or your husband too or what? How? I am the only owner of the, the property. The only owner of the property. These are your parents? Yes. Mother and father? Mother and father. How long, how long is this, have you had this arrangement? How long have your parents lived there? Well, um, they're temporary uh, living with me because they're, when it's cold weather, they go into, we are from Nicaragua, they go into our country when it's the cold weather. Right now, they're with me. So it's like uh, six months, they're coming over here, and other six months, they're spending in Nicaragua. Okay. But this was specifically designed to accommodate their My residency. Parents. Yeah. on a temporary basis yes are you familiar with these stipulations that joey that was just up there yes i on, he saw he he told me that i received an email from him that the what i need to be to make sure that there had to be electricity stone and and i agree with all the stimulation that he talked about Are you, how long have you lived in the property? I buy in April. Last April? No, yes, this April. Last, this past this April. This past April. You purchased the property. Yes, I property. And, and I remodeling the, the property. So um, around September, I have a friend that he have a problem with, and I allow her to leave for temporary. And then now I'm leaving after September in the property with them. Say that again. Okay, I, I buy in April, last April, so it take me like a two or three months to remodeling the home, painting, all the interior stuff. And then in September, I have a friend who had problems and allow her to live in the property. But I, she didn't pay anything to me, I just helping the person. And then after, at the end of September, she find her, her place, and I, after September, in the middle of September, I moved there because I work in a bank in Cumberland is close to me. The bank, I work for Bank of America, Cumberland is close to me. So I actually moved there because I traveled all around right. the state. So, how, so when did your parents move in? My parents, they came, to, uh, they came from Nicaragua by July because my parents have a stroke. He, her medical condition, they will, the care of him. 
So medical condition, so he came, so we treat him in MRI hospital there, so they can here to United States in July. Currently, how many people live in your, your house? It's only me and my two parents. Okay. How many cars are there at the property? Right now it's only one car because my parents doesn't drive, but I don't, in the future if I decide to rent, I'm not gonna put more than three cars because only what the parking allow us. About two cars, right? Yeah. Yes. Anything? Any other questions? Uh, Let's go over the stipulations that Joey indicated. Okay. You fully understand that the finished basement is to only be used by family members. Yes. So you can't rent it out to anybody else. If a friend's in need or in trouble or whatever, you can't let them use it. Okay. And like you said, every six months, your parents go back down to Nicaragua and stay so you can't use it but only for those your parents okay you understand that i understand and that coincides with number two where you can't lease it rent it or sublet it to anybody else okay got in here that the basement stoves from main electric i'm not sure what that means but that, that's in there you got a stove it's electric uh, the conditions have to run in perpetuity with the property for any other future owner. And I've got some problems with like four and five. Uh, and in five, it wants to talk about, you know, deed restricting the property if you were to sell it. So in other words, we don't want some you to sell it, you know, you, hey, you want to move to another house somewhere else or whatever, and you sell the property that the person that buys it has to be well aware of what they're buying and the stipulations that were put on this property by, if this board approves it, by this board. So in other words, you can't sell it in, to somebody in, with them having the understanding that they can use it to sublet or as a rental property, up and down, things like that. You understand that? Yes. My problem with that is I think this, I'm, I'm probably going to go foot further with that to say upon sale that the kitchen, basement kitchen will be totally removed. What do you think about that? You sell it, you got to remove the kitchen, the cabinets, the stove, everything's got to go away. And when it was put in there for a specific purpose, as you're saying, for your parents, but once you sell the property or, or prior to sale, you've got to remove it. And then, I mean, the, th the last stipulation was to hire a building inspector that can satisfy our building officials' curiosity as to whether or not everything that was done down there was done to code to the safety respects of electrical, plumbing, mechanical, and all that. So you understand that's, that's a pretty intense type of inspection It's going to probably be pretty costly that you're going to have to do to, if we approve this to continue to use that as a say basement apartment for your parents understand yes okay i don't have anything else right now okay any other okay thank you Ms. suarez this is a public hearing if there's anybody here to speak for or against agenda item 2a Please step forward at this time. And again, if you would, please speak clearly into the microphone for the record. State your name. Sure. I'm Derek Norton. I reside at 1000 Afton Way. Okay. I'm president of the Homeowners Association. 
Okay. And um, I, I think the stipulations that you all have laid out, I wasn't aware of those are, are good, especially the one that you added with it being taken out. But honestly, I, I think the facts are being misrepresented to y'all. I think, um, first of all, as president of the Homeowner Association, this is the first I've ever seen uh, of, of the, the lady here, uh, a gentleman named Alain Suarez has been representing himself as the owner of the house. And I was dealing with him as far as the renovations and the color that he could paint the house and those types of things. And he, he was good with that. I didn't know anything about another kitchen going in. Um, to my knowledge, no parent, nobody's ever lived in that basement. Nobody's ever, I, I didn't know anybody lived there currently. In fact, I, I, I seriously doubt that they do. I've never seen a car there. Um, I, I don't think it's, I don't think anybody's in there right now. When there were people, when people moved in to that house, she said her friend was there. Um, I spoke to Alan and said, you, you purchased this as a HUD home. I know you can't rent it out. You're not allowed to do that. You know, and as soon as I said that, they were gone. Um, about three weeks later, there were six or seven cars there at that time. I don't know who was living there, um, whether it was a friend or, but it was my understanding that it was being rented out. Um, I just don't think everything's been above board. And I think this would be a mistake to set a precedent like this in our neighborhood where you have all these cars. You know, I, I do like the stipulations, like I said, but something doesn't smell right with this. It just doesn't doesn't pass the test for me. And uh, from the HOA's perspective, we're going to we, we we would request that you deny this. Um, do y'all have any other any questions for me? Do, is there an active HOA or is it an ad hoc HOA? It's a fee simple uh, HOA. I mean, we got a set of covenants that you a do enforce. Yes. Or is any of this enforceable with respect to your covenants? I mean, it's just that there can't be more than one family living there. Um, that's that's the extent of the of, of what the covenants has to say about it. It just can't be a multi. There's no multifamily dwelling. And you said you confronted a painter of some sort. I did. And represented he, and himself he, as the. No, owner? there was a painter, and um, he said to get in touch with the owner. And the number I was given, and the man I spoke with was Alan Alan Suarez, who represented himself as the owner and has throughout this process. I even called when the variant sign was put up and he said, oh yes, we're, we're looking to do in a kitchen. Um, we just want to make sure we go through the right channels and never, never said that there was another owner about, uh, I, you know, I, I just doesn't seem something's not right. So, okay. That's but all I have. Thank but you. Kirk. For, but I mean, some, I mean, in the, the, the association is doing, what it needs to do police their their community right uh, the uh the respect to what you've heard uh sounds like the parents have just moved in not too long ago maybe <laughs> july maybe september i'm trying to figure this one out but uh there's been no car at that house that i know of right now, I by there I all mean, the time testimony said there was a one cars at the house periodically you know i don't know the work hours and all that at what point did you see the six seven it was during the time period that she, she suggested that a friend lived there okay. uh, there was gosh there were cars in the driveway all over the street and i confronted or i called alan about that and he said that this uh, lady had family in helping her with her move uh that they wouldn't be there that long okay. and then all of a sudden they were all gone the lady had moved out so. all right Thank you for your comments. Thanks. If there's anybody else that would like to speak for or against, I ask that you step forward at this time, sir. If you could please state your name and your address. Tony Martinez, 5150 Afton Way, about three houses down from where the, they claim they're living there. When they renovated the place, it was a hot tub in the basement. Uh, one bathroom and i knew the original owner which was a marine he had to transfer it out i've been in the house and there is a staircase with a door upstairs but the new owner renovated all that and made took the hot tub out put living space for 
more people to live there. And then a couple of months after he finished renovating all that, there was a family moved in. I don't know if they were all related, but there were seven different people that moved in that house. There were seven cars parked all over the neighborhood. And my thing is if y'all pass this for them and then he sells it, who is going to say that they would tear it up? And during the process of when they were building all this stuff, I didn't see a city permit allowing them to do all the work down there. And I protest this because I'm not sure for right, for the last two months there was no cars in that driveway. Um, I'm retired and I exercise and I walk the neighborhood and stuff like that. So I haven't seen any residents there since the other people moved out. All seven of them came in at one time was there about two weeks and all of a sudden they were gone. So and, and I don't don't know what else to add to that, but I just don't think he's on the up and up. Okay. Now you you live in the same building or the next one of the buildings? Next down? section of okay. rows of houses, which is four houses down from where this house is located. And the last time you saw activity was when you saw the six, seven cars. All yeah, there over was the place. a tag from Alabama, a tag from Texas, one tag from Cobb County, and they were just all over the country. And about how long ago was that? They were there probably a week or so ago. Huh? How long ago was this? Uh, probably the early part of September, best of my knowledge. But as of right now, it appears that the, no the one lives is at vacant, the home. Right? It's vacant. Nobody's in there. There's no cars in the driveway. I live there every day, retired. And I can see if, if I'm just sitting in my driveway soaking up the sun, I can see if there's a car parked there or not. But there's not been any there. Thank you. Any, no, no questions for this gentleman. Okay. Thank you for your testimony, sir. Is there anybody else that would like to come speak on behalf of this? If you could please state your name and your address clearly. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Henry Valechko. I live at 5054 Afton Way, which is about 30 houses or so down the street from the, uh, the people requesting the variance. I just want to, uh, add that everything uh tony and i have coffee every friday i saw the same seven cars i'm a daily runner there hasn't been a person living in that house or a car in the driveway in months i and uh, you know it's something it's a small community you, you can see what's going on and uh the seven cars saw that saw the mess uh, that that created wasn't sure how long those people were were residents there but I do know that once the HUD, you know, this was a HUD home, should have been occupied by the owners. Once that issue was stated, suddenly they were gone the next day. So that's it. Just wanted to back up what my uh, associate said. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Do you have questions? Ms. Suarez, could you please step forward? Just a couple more questions. Yes. Do, do you actually live there? Yes, I live there. Do you have a Georgia driver's license? Yes, I have it. Here. Can I see it, please? That's it. Okay, thank you.
Okay, go ahead. The the gentleman that they mentioned that Mr. Suarez, who was that gentleman? My husband. Okay. But he doesn't live there. No. Okay. But he, and he's not the owner. No. Okay. And, and and we're hearing testimony that nobody lives there. They don't see any cars there. They don't see anybody there. I I work early. So what I do, I, I get up so early in the morning, around 4.30, and help him because I have two children. I help him, my husband, to, uh, because they live with him because of the school area where they live in Canton. So I take my kids to the school, and I help him early. I get up very early there, and I got a night at, at that home, very night, around 11.30, something like that, because... I take care also help my husband with my kids. So I just go to sleep and get out early and go work. Uh, make a motion we go into executive session. I second that motion. Motion to Convened into executive session is properly seconded. All those in favor? Motion passes 3 0. We'll be right back. Motion we reconvene. I second that motion. Motion to reconvene is properly second. All those in favor? Motion to reconvene passes 3 0. Uh, Ms. Suarez, do you have anything else to add before I call for a vote? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've heard testimony. We've uh, we, We've heard testimony both ways, for and against. Um, if, one last call. If there's anybody else here that would like to speak for or against this, please step forward. Seeing no additional, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that variance request V14-043 to allow a second kitchen within the single family home, 0 0.06 acres, landlot 805, 808. Address is 5134 Afton Way, be denied. I second that motion. We have a motion for denial, properly seconded. Any further discussion? If not, we'll call for a vote. Motion to deny is approved 3-0. Ms. Suarez, this motion for your variance application has been denied. You do have one final appeal process uh, that would be to the mayor and council. You have 10 business days to submit your request in writing to the city clerk's office. Um, if you'd like information on that, we have the deputy city clerk here today. Once we're finished with this, if you'd like, you can submit your uh, appeal. If that's what you intend to do, you could, you could even do that today. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2B, 2014-41. Six appeal of the denial of application for a taxi permit for Wilmer F. Caballero Lazo. Is the applicant present? I ask that you step forward, please. Also, for the record, at the podium is the city attorney, Jeffrey Tucker. Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Chief. Uh, if I can get Marla Gerber from the police department to step up as well. Um, we'll, we'll swear in both the applicant and Ms. Gerber. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, Mr. Caballero, w when you speak to the board, if you can speak right into this microphone, that's uh, that's good because we're recording this. So we need a nice, clear record. Um, would both of you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? I do. I do. All right. Uh, Mr. Caballero, if you'll sit down a minute, we're going to hear from... Ms. Gerber from the police department first, and uh, and then we'll hear from you. Uh, Marla, if you'll step up here. Um, 
The board obviously knows who you are, but uh, for the record, please state your name. Marla Gerber. And you're an employee of the city of Smyrna? Yes, I am. And with what department do you are you employed? The permit department at the police department. For the police department. So what, relevant to what the board is considering today, describe what it is that you do there for applicants for a taxi driver permit. Um, I take their application and I process a criminal history on them and then I decide if they're able to receive a permit or not. So, uh, and, and, and by decide, you mean you determine based on the city's code of ordinances whether they fit the requirements <laughs> that are listed in the code of ordinance for a grant of the permit. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Um, and so last month, uh, on the 20th of November, did um, Wilmer Caballero come and fill out a taxi driver permit application? Yes, he did. All right, and you ran the standard. He, as part of that application, he signed a form where he listed any um, um, convictions or arrests for criminal offenses he'd had within the last five years and gave you permission to run his criminal background check through the official criminal record system. Is that correct? Yes, he did. All right, and so, th and this is something that you're familiar with doing, and these are records that are kept in the regular course of business at the police department. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right, and so when you ran that for Mr. Caballero, what um, did did the record show any um, any criminal offenses within the last five years? Yes, it showed um, two separate arrests. When was? When was the first of them as appeared on the criminal background record? November 16th of 2013 in Cobb County. And what was what was charged at that time? The charges? Yes. Okay. Um, there was a possession of cocaine with intent to distribute and possession of marijuana, which was also a felony. So both of those offenses charged in November of 2013 were felony charges? Correct. Both of them had to do with possession of narcotics in a in an amount sufficient to trigger a felony charge is that correct correct and then did the record uh, did the record as you uh as you viewed it show any disposition of those charges no there was no dispositions listed there's no disposition uh, did the record show any other um uh, arrests or convictions within the past five years. Yes, it also showed another arrest in Cobb County on March 20th of 2014 for trafficking um, and um, obstruction of a law enforcement officer. And what what was the uh, what was the grade of those charges? Were they misdemeanors they were, or felonies? They were both felonies. So they're they're as the record as you ran it with the applicant's permission showed four pending felony charges here in Cobb County. Is that correct? Correct. Um, on the applicant's record, did he disclose, uh, on the application he signed under oath, did he disclose all four of those charges? No, the only um, arrests listed were the ones for November 16 of 2013. And so his, his voluntary disclosure did not show the March 20th uh, arrest on trafficking and obstruction charges. Is that correct? Correct. All right. I don't have any more questions for Ms. Gerber. Any questions from the board for Ms. Gerber? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Caballero, if you'll step up here, please. Um, because here at the board we like to give everyone a chance to respond, is there anything in what Ms. Gerber said that is either incorrect or that you would like to supplement or correct? And you can just, just speak and, and just speak to the board. No, everything she said is correct. So every, if everything she said was correct, you had additional felony charges March of this year. Is that correct? That is correct. And so the application that you signed, is, is this a correct copy of the application yes, you signed? Yes. This was uh, last month. Is that right? Yes, correct. And so up here, you did not disclose your felony charges for this year. Is that correct? No. Uh, but you signed the certification saying that everything you put on this form was true, correct, and complete to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Is that right? Yes. But it was not, in fact, true, complete, and correct. Is that right? Correct. Because if if there was going to be a problem with felonies, it would be this. Since this was November 16, 2013, it's been over a year. My case hasn't been indicted. It won't be indicted. They don't, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the prosecution has not presented one single evidence against me. 
So you cannot keep me from working. You know, I'm trying to work. Right. But my question to you had to do with this year's charges. You, you're required on this application to disclose all of them, but you didn't disclose all of them, did you? No. Okay. Uh, I don't have any more questions for Mr. Caballero. Do we have questions? Um, sir, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I don't see, uh, when I went to apply, there's a, a taxi uh, pamphlet for, uh, it says nowhere here, nowhere in this pamphlet does it say it will be uh, denied for uh, pending felony charges. It says if being convicted, I have not been convicted. Mm -hmm. I am not on probation. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why it was denied. But also on the application, it requires you to fully disclose accurately and truthfully all charges, period, pending or not. Is that correct? Yes. And based off your testimony, you just admitted that you were that you did not disclose all charges. Well, I mean, like I said, if, if it was going to be a problem with arrest, then I, I listed the, uh, the first one, which is 11, 16, 13. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not really following you. I mean, if, if, if there's going to be a problem with charges, it's going to be for, for all of them, not, not just okay. one over the other. Okay. So, I mean, it's been over a year. How long is it going to take, you know? How long are you guys going to keep me from working? Okay, well, we're not keeping you from working. So, and it hasn't been over a year. If, there's, if, if I'm hearing the testimony correctly, the last time that you were arrested was in March of this year. Okay, the first time was uh, November 16th. That's okay. been over That's a correct. year. I have not been in court. Okay. So, you know, and then uh, by denying my permit, it does keep me from working. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Mr. Tucker, is there any additional? There's nothing further from the city attorney's office. Okay. Uh, if there's no further questions or no further testimony at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to deny <clears throat> the appeal of the of the application for taxi permit for William o. Wilmer F. Caballero Lazo 2014-416 business order uh, do, uh, to just deny, deny the permit. Thanks. I second that motion. We have a motion that's properly seconded motion for denial. Is there any further if there's no further comments, I'll call for a vote. Motion to deny passes 3-0. Sir, your, your, your appeal has been denied. Uh, you have one further um, appeal process uh, that's a right to you, and that's to the mayor and council. You have 10 business days to submit your request for appeal, so should you choose to continue to do that, and that has to go directly to the city um, clerk's office. Okay. It was uh, denied based on what? Based off of the testimony given. Okay, next item on the agenda is 3A 2014-412, approval of the license of various board meeting minutes for November 12, 2014. I make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Motion to approve the minutes from November 12, 2014. Properly seconded all those Call for a vote. Motion passes 3-0. This time I'll adjourn this meeting. <laughs>